Today, Gray.com talks with Kim Easton, who is the president and CEO of National Sports Center for the Disabled. Now, if you've not heard of them, they are Colorado's most comprehensive provider of outdoor experiences, advancing the power of people with all abilities through adaptive innovation and the joy of recreation and outdoor experiences. If you're new to the podcast, please press subscribe on the YouTube or in your podcast app because today we are going to learn about what it takes and how you can enable the human spirit through therapeutic sports and recreation. Ms. Kim, thank you, for the, thank you for coming and welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Uh, I was doing a little bit of research before I jumped on here. Uh, I saw, uh, by the way, for our National Sports Center for the Disabled. Uh, moving forward, I'll try to just to coin that as NSCD. So it's not such a mouthful, but I saw you'd been with NSCD for about four years. Uh, and if my research serves me right, it looks like uh, you've been involved with nonprofits really right out of the gate. Uh, I saw if uh, maybe a master's in psychology and from there right into the nonprofit game. And so I, I'm curious what makes you tick? Uh, what, what sparked the inspiration or, or got you involved in nonprofit right out of the gate versus the, the plethora of other paths you could have taken with, you know, the master in psychology? That's a great question. I, you know, and it's taken me a while to kind of in rear view mirror to figure that out, if that makes sense. Um, I have, like you said, been in nonprofit leadership for over 20 years. Before that, I was a teacher for a short time, an early childhood teacher, um, and intended to be a researcher. <laughs> but then life happens, and I fell in love with the world of nonprofit because it gives me the opportunity to put all of my skill set to work helping change lives. Um, my, my leadership purpose is to make a difference where other people can't or might not, and to really connect people with the ability to take advantage of every resource they have so that they can live their best life. Mm. I, I do. I mean, obviously, I want to talk lots about NSCD in detail and what you have going on. But before we unpack the details or start talking about the, the mission, uh, I'd like to maybe start with the problem or the challenge. And uh, can you maybe unpack that a bit? What was the the challenge that this program was founded on to solve? Uh, what, what are you What are you tackling? So the NSCD was started 51 years ago now. We just celebrated our 50th anniversary. And there was a group of doctors and therapists, physical therapists from the Children's Hospital who reached out to Winter Park Resort and said, hey, we have these kids that recently experienced an amputation and we want to get them up to ski so that they can realize that their life is going to be the same life that they, they would have lived um, prior to the amputation. And being in Colorado, where all of us here are, are here because of the beautiful, great outdoors and, and the, the health and wellness that being outside brings in our lives, um, it, it is a pretty devastating impact if someone has an injury and an illness that prevents them from enjoying those same things. So um, all the way back in 1970, before the ADA was even a thing, um, this organization uh, set out to make a difference for people living with disabilities to demonstrate and to prove that they can do anything that they set their minds to. They may just need a little help with adaptive equipment or perhaps a, an instructor that can teach them how to do something in an adapted way. Um, but it, we really are about celebrating everybody's ability and finding a way to get them out there. So we don't stand for the answer of, oh, you can't do that. We're all about, um, okay, let's figure out a way that you can. Mm. I, uh, <clears throat> I didn't tell you this offline just cause I, I wanted to wait until we were online, but I personally connect with this. <clears throat> I, I personally connect with this, especially as I hear you talk about, um, what it was founded on, uh, as my, my stepmother, when I was, uh, right as I was graduating high school, uh, she was diagnosed with a terminal illness. And when I was in college, uh, she actually had her first stroke and it affected the entire left side of her body. Um, she was, you know, she had to relearn, retrain herself how to walk, retrain herself how to talk, how to grab forks, how to, I mean, many, many things, right? And uh, I was able to observe from, I mean, close, but uh, not personal impact, right? I was able to observe 
the type of impact that this this pivot, this, this change has, right? Like you're, you're living one way, you're trucking along and, and enjoying life one way, uh, an event happens and almost overnight, you have to, you have to change the way that you live and you have to change what you enjoy or start to rethink things. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really difficult thing to manage mentally. And I would, I, I'd love to learn more about what you guys are doing, what your organization is doing to, recharge these individuals, how, how you go about uh, arming them with the materials, the resources, the uh, guidelines, whatever that is. What, what are you doing with these children, these individuals to support them, right? What, what, what does the organization do? Sure. And I mean, you really hit the nail on the head is, is this organization is founded on rethinking ability mm. and redefining what is possible. And although we do that work through connection to adaptive outdoor recreation, because we know that being in nature and being active and um, those things in combination are good for physical health and mental health and just all around well-being. But the beauty of what we do really comes in those small moments where um, whether it's a child or an adult that's experienced an injury or has had a lifetime illness, um, they try something new and they succeed and it changes their perspective, mm. not just their perspective on the ability to do that sport, but their perspective on life. And I think another thing that you shared that's really important is that um, disabilities don't impact just the individual. A disability, and, and we like to use the language of people living with disabilities, right? Mm. So there's an individual that's living with a disability, but there's also family members and caregivers and community and employers and friends and all of, you know, all of the other people that live with that disability. And so, you know, oftentimes the impact that we have is as profound for a family member as it is for the individual. And I'll, I'll share a a personal experience, and I apologize, I get a little emotional still to this day when I share this. I, I moved out to Colorado to be a ski instructor, just to take a year off and, and just enjoy what I love to do. That's my heart passion, the thing that I can do that can, can just completely clears away all of the stress and anxiety. Hmm. And so I was a ski instructor. I did my required training in adaptive skiing. And this was back, I mean, 30 years ago. And I had no idea why I was fascinated with that, but I felt in the back of my head at some point in time, this is <laughs> going to be useful and here I am. Um, but I had the opportunity to take out a family on a private lesson. It was a mom, a dad, and a young boy that had cerebral palsy. Um, and so here's this very active Colorado family whose life revolved around sports, skiing, bicycling, <laughs> hiking, uh, and they had a child with cerebral palsy and that changed their entire life that and changed that family's entire perspective. So we're out, I'm teaching the family how to take their son in a sit ski. So the, the goal would be that they could all ski together. Um, we had a, an amazing morning. We're in for lunch. I'm taking a break. I happen to walk by the mom um, in the restroom and she's crying. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what's wrong? Am I not doing a good job? Are you like, are we not having a great day? And she said, no, just the opposite. My husband was so devastated with our son's diagnosis that he's barely engaged with him as a person, as a human. Mm -hmm. He's a great dad. He does the dad stuff, but there hasn't been that connection. And today on the Hill, watching the two of them connect emotionally over something that they both seem to love to do has changed our life and it will change our life on a go forward. Mm. That's, that's what we do here. <laughs> yeah. It's so, uh, and I love the idea. I mean, we're, we're talking about that. It's more than an individual. It's empowering for the family. Um, there, there was, there were times where, uh, they would try, you know, experience or, uh, um, experiment, types of, of drugs or therapies on my stepmother. And it'd have a, a really tragic uh, 
aftermath or effect. Uh, about a year ago, um, she got to the point strength wise where she was able to do her first ropes course. And there's this thing where, uh, you know, it's three levels and you go up in the air and you're attached by like the back of your shirt. And as you go up and levels, the third floor is like the most aggressive and you have all these athletes up there and they're doing all this great monkey bars way up in the air. And, um, you know, we, we start at the ground floor and she has this giant brace on her leg and she's working through that. And we slowly worked our way up to by the end of it, we're both drenched in sweat, but she completed one of the routes on the third floor and the overwhelming sense of emotion that her and I had up at the top. Uh, and then as we finished and got in the car and talked about what she had just done and the path that she had taken, uh, those moments, um, they'll, they'll last forever, right? I tap into that. I think about that often. I think about that as I work out, as I train, as I, as I get lazy, mm -hmm. I know she thinks about it. I mean, it's so empowering. Um, I want to ask, it was founded, the, the organization was founded, I think you mentioned on a group of amputees. Uh, have you since shifted and accepted more, um, disabilities or those that are working with disability disabilities, or is this specific to amputees today? Uh, no, the NSCD serves anyone of any age from five to 105 um, with really any, uh, any disability, uh, whether that's a physical disability, intellectual behavior, or emotional disability, um, anyone that wants to get out and be active and live a Colorado life um, that needs a little help, we're here for them. And we either have the equipment or the professionals, or just the training to to get that done. Yeah, and and talk to me about the the substance. Are you are you meeting once a year, biannually, once a month, <laughs> quarterly? How how frequently are you meeting? What are you doing? Like, how does when someone gets involved, what what's the, what's next? Sure, uh, participants are able to get involved really at any level that they're interested in. So depending on the sport that they've chosen, and we have over 20, uh, many that are year round, um, obviously skiing, snowboarding, um, Alp Nordic skiing happen in the winter time. Um, but we also have therapeutic horseback riding, rock climbing, whitewater rafting, kayaking. So a lot of, a lot of the sports we do year round. Um, we provide multi-day camps. So a lot of people will come and do a multi-day camp and then they'll come back on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, we have people that do just come for a one-time situation or a group. We can put together a custom group. So we might have people that travel to our destination um, and participate for a week long. Uh, it changes their lives. They go back uh, to wherever they live um, and hopefully get connected with a other adaptive outdoor rec organizations like ours and keep being active. So people can sign up for multi-day -less multi lessons, single-day lessons. It's really all about um, meeting each individual where they are and giving them the equipment, the training, the skills, and the practice that they need. Hmm. Um, I wanted to ask, what is the expected outcome? And we've talked a bit about transformation. You've given a case study. I gave a case study of, of my own. Uh, when I'm, I'm sure each individual has a different outcome they're expecting, but um, as someone enters your program, uh, are, are they looking for just the environment and the atmosphere and the network and the relationships? Are Do they show up with a fitness goal in mind? Are they showing up with the idea maybe in, in you know several years that they'll compete? Uh, do you see that spectrum? Like w w when someone shows up, what are they expecting to get out of it? Every individual that walks in our doors, I think – two things. They have their own set of goals and outcomes. Uh, and we work very hard to start every lesson with deeply understanding what they want to get out of it and then building an experience for that individual that accomplishes that. But I think secondly, every individual that comes in the door has a set of expectations and outcomes that they're wanting to achieve. And they achieve so much more, so much more than they had ever expected. And so I think it really depends. You know, I think we have parents that bring their children just to have a fun day, you know, and we have parents that bring their children because they want them to practice standing in line and social skills and um, learning a, just the practice of learning a sport. We um, have a spectrum of programming from recreational 
you know, entry level, never done the sport before to training competitive athletes who are aspiring to be in the next Paralympics. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a whole competition center of athletes uh, of which our goal is to train them up to a level where they get um, onto their country's team. Uh, because we have athletes from all over the world that train with our competition center. We have multi gold medalists um, that that come to our program every year and train. So um, it, it's every gamut from I've never done, I've never put a ski boot on my foot to I'm, I'm racing at 45 miles an hour down a slalom slope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, how about the, how about the scale? I mean, you're, you're year round. Uh, I think you mentioned 18, 20 different um, programs or activities that they could be involved with. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about maybe the number of participants or just the kind of scale that you're operating at today? Yes. Well, as you can imagine with the COVID pandemic, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last 18 months. So I'll talk about a typical year. Please. In a typical year, we serve um, over 4,000 individuals. Um, the average number of lessons that an individual participates in is about five. So if you at, start adding up the, the lesson numbers, that's that's a lot. Yeah, over it is. A thousand different lessons are, are happening every year across those 20 or so different sports that we do. So um, our goal is to really grow that participant pool, but also maintain a really high quality program delivery. We don't, don't want to just grow for the sake of growing, but we feel like particularly along the front range um, in our Denver centered programs, um, there's so much opportunity. There's over 600,000 people in Colorado that live with a disability. And if you just focused on the percentage of those that um, report being active or interested in being active, that's still uh, nearly a hundred thousand individuals, right? Wow. And we're serving four. So <laughs> we feel like the, we feel like the, we can really have more impact. Yeah. Well, actually that, that, that was going to be my next question is like, uh, I mean, on paper, this makes so much sense, right? And it may, maybe it makes more sense to me because it's, it's personal and I can see this, but um, what, what challenge are you facing? Uh, if uh, there's a hundred thousand people that could potentially be interested in this, you're at four. Uh, is it just lack of staff? Is it lack of capital? Um, is it just, you know, what, why are we not, why, why have we not scaled to a hundred thousand yet? And maybe that's not your goal, but I'm, I'm asking, you know, what, what is your monthly challenge that you feel like you're facing today? I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's multifaceted. There's always a funding component. Obviously, you really grow as much as you have the resources to pay the staff to grow. Um, we're fortunate to have some really fantastic partnerships with the Denver Broncos and with Winter Park Resort uh, that allow about 30% of our budget is covered in, in kind due to those to those relationships, which Having been a nonprofit for a long time, that's a really phenomenal number. So our actual operating costs are very low because of what, where our dollars go are for our people. It's a amazing staff, highly trained, passionate staff that make the difference in this program. So obviously getting those people in our door so that we can help um, provide programs is step one. I think step two is, uh, we just rolled out our new brand um, and our new messaging. So I think we're in a place where we have way more clarity about who we are and what we do in a deeper way. Um, and now we need to take that message out. Um, our outreach and marketing, um, we're often called the best kept secret. And that's like the, <laughs> the worst thing I like <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's, like, no. it's the best compliment, but you hate to hear it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like that is not what we want to be. So, you know, I think that's where um, getting people involved, having the opportunity to share this information with someone like you and getting it out to your audience. Um, it's not just about a partnership that would bring more resources, which are welcomed, but it's every person in our, our new hashtag, our new kind of mantra is rethinkability. Mm -hmm. We want to transform lives of our individual participants, of our families and caregivers, but of our broader community 
to change how they think about people living with disabilities. And so for every person that hears this podcast, um, if they could tell one person, one more person, one more person outside of that, um, one of those people is going to have a disability and they're going to go, oh, I should go and look at that. And then we can change one more life. So yeah. I think the resources to get the message out there is is really our, one of our biggest and current focus. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure the many people that tune into this and the ears that you've captured, they, at this point, they're going to start to have the feel goods. Right. We, we've talked about a lot of the great impact and, and the feelings. And, and like you said, at some point, you're going to either in your immediate circle or maybe in that secondary circle, have someone that, you know, that could be impacted or that could, that could benefit from this. I'm going to ask a bit of a guided question because I've seen the stats and I understand how effective this is. But I, I want to ask, is this approach that you're taking, is it effective uh, it, as folks leave, as participants leave your your organization, they've come in for training, they come in for some classes, they've gone through this, you know, several day class, as they leave, uh, is this effective? Do you, do you see the impact? Do they come back? Like, I'd like to know the impact that it has on that individual. Is it effective? Sure. Um, well, I think the fact that the average number of lessons an individual takes is at least five, I think is a good indicator that definitely had a good experience and they, they're coming back for more. Um, I think also in our annual participant surveys, any anywhere between 95 to 99 percent of our participants will say, my life has been changed because I did this program. Mm. I believe I will be more physically active and therefore live a healthier day to day life because I learned that I'm able to do more than I thought I was able to do physically. Um, I have learned not just skills in the particular sport I was in, but I had learned new life skills by participating in this program. So I am more confident. I am more self-assured. I am more motivated to live my life in a different and healthier way. And then lastly, I think the number of individuals that report having made new friendships, social connections, have built a community of like-minded and, and like-abled um, people is a game changer. We've all just went through this experience of the COVID pandemic where we've been um, isolated and disconnected. And I think the world has an opportunity to better understand and acknowledge what that disconnection feels like and be able to better understand how people living with disabilities have felt like that mm. forever for their entire lives. And so now that we know what that feels like, I certainly hope that's one more motivating factor for every person to better promote, understand and support people living with disabilities, finding whatever activity is that they love to do that connects them yeah. socially and emotionally. You, you hit on one of my favorite bullets that I pulled uh, from that survey, actually. 99% uh, of participants are more likely to continue an active lifestyle. Uh, my second favorite that I jotted down, 90% of participants achieved their therapeutic goals. They showed up with um, a, a therapeutic goal, a mental state, something they're trying to get to, and 95% of them, as they left, uh, agreed or said, hey, we were able to achieve that, which I think it, it, it speaks wonders uh, because you and I both understand the the emotional roller coaster they deal with. So to have that type of success rate, I, I think it speaks just wonders to what the activities and, and the, the training, the hands-on type of experience they get out there. Um, I, I wanted to close with this. Um, I think there are two types of people that could be tuning in to this podcast. Uh, one, someone that has uh, someone that could be impacted in their immediate circle, uh, someone that has or knows someone with a disability and they could link them to you. The second is someone that just wants to see someone else hit their therapeutic goal or, or uh, be involved in that process. So uh, sort of a twofold question for those that want to be involved, those that uh, you could have an immediate impact on, those that know uh, those with disabilities, how could they be involved? And then those that just want to support, maybe financially, maybe volunteer hours, that they just want to be involved with your mission. Um, what, what, how could they be involved? 
Absolutely. That's such a great question. It is so easy to get involved. And I, but I will put this uh, fair warning out is that once you get involved, you will stay involved. We talk about the NSCD family all of the time, whether that's volunteers, participants, staff, um, there is something that happens to your heart once you've gotten connected. So um, just fair warning. Uh, first of all, for those who would like to participate, just going to our website, nscd.org, and click on the button right smack in the middle that says participate. And you can see all of the different activities that we provide. You can get signed up. You can uh, get more information about those programs. Uh, you don't have to live in Colorado to do this. It's a great family trip because there are so much to do. Um, in addition, uh, we can run family trips, all sorts of things. So if, if there's a sport and an activity and an outdoor adaptive rec option that you want, we're here for you. Call us. Secondly, if you are uh, just interested in this mission, if you are interested in helping the world rethink ability, um, volunteering is a great way to do that. Our um, programs rely on over 1,200 volunteers a year. Um, we provide a lot of amazing training and um, help individuals that have a passion for a particular sport learn how to do that and teach that sport for someone with a disability. Um, and it's a game changer. We have volunteers that have been with us for 30 and 40 years, and they they, are, they still come every, uh, every season for their sport and they just love it. It changes their life. Um, so volunteering is a great way to get involved. If you're not an athlete, there's still a lot of other volunteer opportunities. We always need support, whether it's through events or we do ability clinics and things. Um, it's administrative support, marketing support. There's all different ways to get involved. Bring your time and treasure and we will we will put you uh, in a position where it will change our, our organization. And then lastly, of course, we are always open and excited to, to get new donors connected to our organization. Um, it's really easy and quick to just donate online. Any amount does help. We do have an event coming up called Exceeding Boundaries that's happening in June. And that event will could be a great way to learn more about the organization. Um, there'll be some testimonials from direct participants, as well as um, some awards to amazing individuals and organizations that have had a profound impact on our organization. And we will be giving a Lifetime Achievement Award to Hal O'Leary, who is our founder. Um, so that will be really special. Same thing, you can find that information right online. It's a virtual event, so you don't even have to be in Colorado to attend. Just um, sign up and you can, can learn all sorts more about this amazing organization. Awesome. I've, uh, I've had this, this interview in particular uh, circled for, I guess we've had this booked for probably two weeks now. And uh, as soon as I, I hit the website and I, I started to understand the mission and what, what this was built on, uh, I started triple and quadruple circling it. I got really excited about this. It, it hit close to home to me and uh, you knocked it out of the park. So I, Ms. Kim, I'm very, very appreciative for your time, uh, especially on a Monday morning. Thank you very much. Thank you for en enjoying this conversation so much and for sharing this amazing work. Of course. Uh, for the listeners, um, thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please press subscribe on YouTube or on your podcast app. Uh, this shows the algorithm that this is an important conversation so many more people can learn the importance of rethinkability, where we can spark the thought, what if, in people that have not truly realized what they're capable of.